one of you mind doing the clapping board for us? That's youngest. <laughs> Well, guys, let's start by assessing each other's form so far this season. Kyle, how do you think Phil's performed so far? Um, I've, I've said it. I've said it a lot of times. How what I think about Phil. Um, you know, I think he's been very patient in the journey that we've probably took together at Manchester City from starting 2017 when I first joined and I believe that was your first year as well with the first team um, to waiting obviously the likes of Raz Riyad Bernardo sometimes played out right um, he's bided his time and I think now um, when we've needed him the most especially at club level he's really stepped up with Erlin and Kevin uh, being missing He's been very nice about you Phil How's he done this season? Yeah, brilliant. I think um, he's been a leader, he's been a captain. Um, yeah, and I've seen him put up with the best wingers in the world, and he does it every year, and I don't know how he does it, but he does. So, so, so yeah, for me, he's been unbelievable. Let's talk a little bit more about your season and your career so far, because a word that Carl used there was patience. You've had to be quite patient, haven't you? Definitely. I've had a lot of um, unbelievable players in front of me and yeah, I've just had to wait and be patient and work hard and I think now I'm playing a lot more and yeah, just expressing myself and playing with a smile on my face. Have you noticed a difference in him off the pitch this season that maybe has contributed to what's happened on it? No, I, w I wouldn't say he's changed in any way. Um, Phil's always been Phil, um, very down to earth, just a quiet lad. Um, he expressed himself on the football pitch and that's where we want him to um, to do it. I feel what he's just said there, where he can drift in and he's had a little bit more of a free role. Um, and I think he's probably enjoyed the the pressure that's been laid on him when Erling's been missing, or Kevin, for example, at club level. But, you know, we're here now talking about England and, you know, it's massive for him to also do that on the international stage. I feel, um, you know, that's another step in his career that he needs to go and a player like him, you know, should be looking at 100 caps and plus. Where do you want to see him on a team sheet? When you look at the team sheet, where should Phil Foden be playing? I don't know. I got asked that the other week. Where, where is Phil's best position? Um, I feel, you know, he, he's very good in between the lines. Now, that doesn't have to be a specific position for me. I feel that he can flow and go and get involved in the game. I think when someone's got the talent that he's got, you need to go and find the ball if the ball's not coming to you. So go and find it and go and make things happen. So that's not down to me. I'm not the manager. I can't really tell you where <laughs> Phil is meant to play. But from his form this season, um, from what he's shown over the last seven years that I've seen him, I'll say it now in front of him, he's the best young talent I've, I've seen by, by a mile. It's not bad praise, Big that, statement. Is it? <laughs> not bad. Can you play in your best position for England, do you feel? Definitely, I feel um, I can play as the 10 or maybe wide coming inside. I think there's a lot of freedom there. Gareth gives you a lot of freedom as well, so, so yeah, I feel like I can. We've spoken a lot about you. He said you're the best young talent he's seen. Could you have done a lot of what you've done, particularly this season, without him? Definitely not. <laughs> like you said there, he does all my defending for me at times. Um, yeah, for me, I want to say that as well. He's the best right-back I've seen. Um, Best 1v1 defender I've ever seen, so, so yeah. He said he shouts at you a lot on the pitch, he tells you what to do. Give us an insight into what that's like. Nah, he knows I can take it on board, you know, um, it's tough luck, you know. He can shout at me at times, give me advice, but he knows that I can take it on the chin and, um, yeah, and take his advice, so, so yeah. Carl, it feels like we went from this time last year speculation about your future, were you even going to be in the Premier League? You're now captain for Manchester City and inarguably some of the best form of your career, would you say? It helps when you're playing in a good team. I think everyone speculates on is this your best form or not. Like Individually, you always look at yourself, of course, but the game's not about you. It's about the team and the team getting the three points or the team getting the win. So for me, as I said before, it's about them going getting goals, them going getting the assist. They normally take the plaudits. Um, 
and we just do our, our job at the back. You know, I think it, when you're leading into a tournament or you're challenging for Premier League, Champions League, FA Cups, which we're still all in, a good defence, you know, that's the bedrock of the team. You know, that's the foundations of the team. So if we can make sure that we show up shop and make sure that we've got a, a stable platform to go and build on, these guys just need to go and express themselves and do what they do every day in training. What does Kyle bring to a team? Leadership, I think he's got a lot of experience in the game now. Good mentality, good leadership. Um, banter. Yeah. Huh? Banter. Bit of banter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the right times. Yeah. Um, Important. No, nah, he's just got a good mix and he's someone you need on the pitch and he helps all those young players and attacking players as well. So it's, yeah, it's good to have him in the team. Is that something that you've developed throughout your career? Have you always been quite vocal and a leader? No, definitely not. Um, I've always, you know, been the one that's causing the banter and everything like that. That's just <laughs> me as a character. But I would say that you pick it up. I feel that when I went to City, um, I learnt a lot off of Vinny. Um, I'm a totally different character to Vinny. I want people to be able to come up to me, to approach me. Not that Vinny wasn't, but he was more of a, you know, a serious leader. I want, you know, I, I want to make sure that everyone, whether it's your first cap. 70th cap, whatever it may be, you know, everyone feels comfortable. There's no hierarchy. We're all the same. We're all here by merit, um, and it should be an enjoyment. And I, you know, I'd like to say, from as I said before, you know, when I first came into the England squad in 2010, they were. It was different. It was different. Everyone said that it was different. So when new players come in now, when the young once he's not young anymore. Like he's, a, he's got <laughs> enough. Pre- he's got the <laughs> Premier League medals. To, you know, he's an experienced player now, and he's played in big games. But everyone should feel comfortable. Everyone should want to be here to express themselves and to enjoy the game that we all love. Fourteen years you've been playing for England now. Feels probably quite a long time ago. How old were you at that point? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ten. You were ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you describe your international career and the journey that you've been on with England? Yeah, it's been um, ups and downs, ups and downs from Iceland getting knocked out um, to the semi-finals at the World Cup in Russia when probably no one really expected us to do that, to then a the Euros final which was so close at Wembley. Um, so there's been a lot of ups and downs, but every time you put on the shirt, it's... it's it's pressure, of course it is, but it's proud. It's a proud moment for me. I had a brief moment where I wasn't in the squad. And you kind of actually appreciate when you're here what it actually means to be a part of this fantastic group of lads. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because that did that almost reignite an added hunger for you to play for your country? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think that's just me um, in general. When people write me off, when people put me down, I've got a mentality where, you know, I think I'm going to prove you wrong. I think that's where my fire comes from. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, the manager felt at that brief moment in time that I wasn't, you know, able to make the squad. You know, I didn't hold it against him. I just got my head down and I carried on. Uh, I think I was on 49 caps and I got a red card against Iceland. Um, so then looking back now, 81 caps later, um, I'm still going and, you know, I, I, want, to, I want to continue. How long can you go on for, Kyle? Again, I, who knows? Who knows? I've got a, a contract to fulfil out at City, which I intend to absolutely do so. Um, I'm, I'm playing against these wingers. That's the problem because the standard of wingers, are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the standard of wingers are really, yeah, are really, really good. But I, I try and look after myself as much as possible. Um, I try and make sure that, you know, I'm fit, I'm healthy, you know, I do my gym work, I do everything that I need to do. And as long as I can keep catching these, I'll, I'll continue to keep going. He's not slowing down, though, Doesn't is he? Doesn't age, mate, honestly. What's the secret? <laughs> Genetics. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't even Genetics. pass that down no. to anyone? No. Uh, I have some for you. Yeah, <laughs> I, listen, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I think it's genetics. I, I do work hard on, you know, my gym work and stuff like that, but... I do think, you know, with my pace and stuff, I've inherited that from my dad, 100%. Big three months of build-up for England before the Euros. 
could be a big three or four months for the both of you. So many trophies that you're both still playing for. Definitely shows a level of consistency. Um, you know, what we achieved last year to show that we're still there in the competitions this year, to show our mentality and the determination that we have in the group. I know the treble was incredible, obviously, at club level. You could do it again this year. But one thing you both must be desperate for, you know what it's like to win trophies, but not for England yet. Yeah. You know, that's the the one that where, you know, me and Phil are missing probably is something that we can say that we've, you know, done something for England. Um, I feel that in everything there's a process. I feel that this is the right step that we're taking onto something special. Um, we was at Porto against Chelsea and we came second. Two years later we go on and do the treble. So things can happen in football um, and just hopefully now it's our time. We've got the players, um, we've got the squad. But we need to obviously make sure that when them knockout games come, that we're, you know, on the winning end. Does it feel like it could be our time? I don't want to think too far ahead, but, you know, like Kyle just said there, we've, we've nearly achieved something with the national team. We've been so close um, in the Euros, losing on penalties. Um, so we're, we're going in the right direction and we know what it takes. We've been there before, so hopefully we can take all that into the next one and try our best.